Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to our virtual classroom. Today we are going to be go, going over SB 16-2, uh, which is dependent and independent variables. This is our 34th lesson. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I do encourage you to pause this video and uh, copy down uh, the notes, especially this top part, all the way up to this arrow down here, um, just so that you can, um, yeah, just so that you can just follow along um, in your own notebook as you see me go through some of these notes. So again, pause the video, continue uh, once you have done that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before we begin, let us talk about the word variable. So we are talking about dependent and independent variables. Now, if you were to say, well, a variable, it can be like a letter, right? A letter or a symbol that stands for a number, right? Then you would be correct. Yes, it's a letter or symbol that we put in whenever we don't know a, a number or whenever we know a number can, can change depending on the situation. And in fact, when you look at the word variable, we see that the prefix is the word vary. Vary, which simply means to change or to be different. And so a variable, ladies and gentlemen, is anything that can change, um, uh, that can change or can be different from person to person or situation to situation, or I don't know, from car to car, from school to school, from time to time, etc. Anytime you have uh, something that can be different from one thing to another, that is a form of a variable. Um, for example, your grade. Your grade is a form of a variable that can change from person to person. Uh, it doesn't mean that nobody can have the same grade as you. It just means that potentially that can change from person to person. Um, you can tell things about like um, the score. The score that a team's, uh, that is a score, that's a sore. <laughs> the score that a team scores uh, on a given on any given game night, uh, whether that be football or soccer or volleyball or whatever, a score is a variable that can change from team to team, right? Uh, the number of uh, I don't know seats on a car that's a variable. You know that's going to change from car to car. Uh, the time it took for somebody to finish a test that's going to change from person to person, right? Uh, think of something such as like um, the Ice cream sales. Ice cream sales, that's gonna change depending on the time of year, right? That's gonna vary from season to season, etc. cetera. Um, ladies and gentlemen, all of these are examples of variables. However, you're gonna find that some variables affect other variables. In other words, as one thing changes, it's gonna cause something else to change. So I want you to think about what are some of the things or some of the variables that are affected by other variables. In fact, all of these examples that I put here are examples of variables that can be affected by something else. For example, your grade could be affected by the amount of time that you spend studying, right? So how much you study may affect your grade. Perhaps maybe how much, uh, time you spend playing video games, I'm willing to bet that that, that that might also affect your grade. The more video games somebody plays, potentially that might lower their potential grade or something like that, right? Uh, the score for any given sport, how well a team can do, is oftentimes, or I think is always influenced by the amount of practice time, of solid practice time that they engage in. Uh, ice cream sales will obviously be influenced by the temperature. So as you can see, study time, video game time, practice time, the temperature, these are also variables, but these are variables that affect another variable, affect another variable. And that brings us to the two different types of variables that we are gonna be talking about today. That is the independent variable, and the dependent variable. Notice the colors that I am using. So an independent variable changes the outcome for another variable. 
again, the independent variable, it's like that is what comes first and that causes something else to change. It causes an outcome. It changes the outcome for another variable, that other variable being the dependent variable. We'll get into that in a little bit. Think about these things. Ice cream sales and temperature. Is it that, that as the temperature goes up, so do, meaning it gets hotter, do the ice cream sales go up? Or is it the other way around where the more ice cream is sold, then the weather's just gonna get hotter automatically? Obviously, you cannot go both ways. It has to be that as the temperature changes, that is gonna influence ice cream sales, right? Consider uh, practice and the score that a team has. Obviously, the more a team practices, the, the better their performance in the field or on the court. And obviously, the more somebody studies, that is going to influence their grade in a positive way. The more video games somebody plays, that is also going to influence their grade, but probably in a negative way, right? So we can see that there's an obvious progression from one of these to the other. And that first one, that would be the independent variable, what comes first. It is the variable that you control. For example, you control how much you study, and that affects your grade. You control your video games, that affects your grade. Your team can, uh, can control the practice, and that affects the score. Or the independent variable is just something that is, by its very nature, uncontrollable, meaning that it's just going to happen, and it's going to have consequences, like the temperature, like the day, like the days are just going to pass by, and that's going to affect somebody's age or how long your hair is or how tall you are, et cetera. And that obviously leads us to the dependent variable, which is the variable that will change. It will change depending on how another variable changes. In short, the dependent variable depends. It depends on the independent variable. The dependent variable depends on the independent variable. All right. So, so if there's anything I want you to get from this lesson, it's, it's just that. That, that a variable will be, will either be influencing another variable, it's going to be independent, and it's going to be influenced, or it's going to be influenced, it's going to depend on what some other variable does. All right, so with that in mind, let's do some of these problems together. Let's go into our OneNote notebook and scroll down to number six. And it reads that Bailey sells bouquets of flowers at a farmer's market in the city. Each day, she goes to the market, she sells seven bouquets. Let us circle the important information. So it says each, which means every one day, each day, she goes to the market and sells seven bouquets. Now pay close attention to the two variables that we have here. We have day and we have bouquet, like a bouquet of flowers. That's how you spell bouquet. I know it looks kind of odd, but still. Ask yourself, which of these comes first? Which of these is going to influence the other? Is it going to be that the more bouquets she sells, the days are going to go pass by faster? Or as the days go along, she's going to have accumulated more bouquet sales? I think it's pretty obvious to me that the day is the independent variable. I'm going to put IND for independent. And the bouquet is going to depend, the bouquet sales is going to depend on the time that passes by. The more time passes by, the more sales she's going to be able to make. Awesome. So let's go into our notebook and let's make a table. And I encourage you to pause this video as you make your own table. Uh, just go ahead and just copy the one that I have here. So again, I encourage you to pause the video and then let's continue. Now you're going to note the day. Again, that is my independent variable. Not only am I going to have that in pink, but I'm going to label it X. Because again, a variable, we're going to use a letter or symbol uh, because that's going to change. Um, and so I'm going to use X to represent the day. And I'm going to use the letter Y to represent my bouquets. And you'll see why I'm doing that later. So X and y. x is my independent, y is my dependent. And that kind of makes sense because in the alphabet, x comes before y, right? So the independent always comes first and that affects the, the dependent. So x is first and then followed by y. So after one day, seven bouquets are sold. Got it. After two days, 
We're going to follow that same pattern, 14. After 3, 21. After 4, 28. After 5, 35 bouquets are sold. After 6 days, we have 42. And after 7, we have 49. So what is the pattern that we observe here? Well, if you notice, what I'm really doing is that I'm taking the day, and if I multiply it by 7, right, that gives me the number of bouquets sold, 7 times 1, 7 times 2, 7 times 3. Or really, I can just take 7 times the whatever day you're on. That is going to give me the number of bouquets that were sold, or my Y. Really, we are going or increasing by seven. We are increasing every single time uh, one day passes by, as my days increase by one, my bouquets will increase by seven. Ladies and gentlemen, this is known as my rate of change. My rate of change, the, the, the way in which my dependent variable is increasing. In fact, you can just write this down. My rate of change is the change in one variable depending or according, so obviously this is my dependent variable, the change in my dependent variable according to the change of another variable. Obviously that is my independent variable. So we have my dependent variable over my independent variable. So here, my dependent variable, the bouquets are changing by seven for every one day that passes by. So it's seven over one, which is really just equal to seven. So my rate of change is seven. How much is it changing by for every one day? It's changing at a rate of seven. It's increasing by rate of seven. So again, I do have my y, which again is my in my dependent variable over my dependent variable. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's my table. Uh, I can see how uh, really I, I just have to take whatever my x is and multiply it by seven, and that's going to give me my bouquets. I can get my my day multiplied by seven gives me my bouquets. Awesome. So what if we were to graph this? Let's go ahead and graph this. All right, so I'm going to count 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and go horizontally. And if you remember my, um, uh oh, I didn't mean to do that. Whenever I'm graphing something, we have two axes. We have the x-axis, which is my horizontal axis, horizontal, like the horizon. And we have the y-axis, which is my vertical axis, vertical. All right, obviously, x comes before y. So meaning that. This is going to be, I'm going to plot my x variable on the x axis my, my, and my y variable on the y axis. x comes first, that is my independent variable. So obviously, my days are going to go on the bottom. That is my independent variable. You will always find your independent variable plotted on the x axis. And my y is going to be the bouquets. So let me just fill in some of these lines. So for my days, we have one days, two days, three days, four days, five days, six days, seven days, eight days, etc. And for my Ys, I'm going to go by fives, because notice that I have to include from seven all the way to 49. So I'm going to go by five so that I can fill all of this up. So this is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. 40, 45, 50, and then these are just going by one, two days, three days, four days, five days, six days, seven days, and eight days. When I plot this, notice for whenever my x is one, that's why I used x and y, now you see, 
my independent variable is always on the x. So when x is 1, I have 7. So right here, somewhere between the 5 and the 10. For 2, it's going to be 14. For 3, it's going to be 21. For 4, it's going to be 28. For 5, is going to be 35. For 6, is going to be 42. And for 7, it's going to be 49. So all the way up here, 49 or so. Notice the shape of this of what of, of, of this that I plotted here. This is a relatively a relatively straight line, is it not? I mean, if, if I was plotting this on graph paper, it would be a perfectly straight line if I was using a ruler and everything. So yes, this, ladies and gentlemen, is known as a linear linear, which is just linear relationship. And you'll learn more about that later. Um, I just wanted you to observe that that's what's called linear because it, it makes a perfect line. It's a linear relationship. But yes, uh, that may seem like it was a lot of work, but it really wasn't. All I did is I plotted the, the pattern for one day was seven, for two was 14, for three was 21, for four was 28, for five was 35, for six, 42, and for seven, 49. And then I just made that into a graph. My days is my independent variable that goes on the bottom. And for every one day, I, it goes up seven, bouquet, my dependent variable. For two days, that's going to make it 14, et cetera. Notice how it's going up by seven. My rate of change is seven every single time. And ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it. That's how these relationships work. Um, and so obviously we're we're not going to be doing uh, too much more of this, and I don't want to make this into a long video, but I just wanted you to be exposed into how one variable might affect another, how one variable is going to be independent of anything else, and it's going to affect another, and that variable is going to be dependent on this other one in the same way that your grade will be affected by how well you study um, in this case, the bouquet cells were in, were influenced directly by the time that was going on, um, how long she was selling them for. All right, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found this helpful. And with that in mind, I will see you next time.